Hi there, I'm Dr. Roach. Uh, this is the series of videos that's just going to help you get your software installed for IC210. And I wanted to start by introducing myself with my face. Hello. Uh, sorry that we're not meeting actually face to face in person, but um, I hope that these videos and the instructions aren't helpful to just get your laptop set up. The class is really about programming, which is a different way of thinking. It's not about how to use any particular tool or how to um, get good at uh, customizing your environment. So that's why we're trying to just get this setup stuff out of the way as quickly as possible at the beginning so that in class we can really talk about what's interesting, which is how do we craft programs, how do we get computers to do um, what we want to do. Um, and that's that's what we'll be learning about. Great, I look forward to it. And don't hesitate to send your instructor an email. You have my email address now. You have the course website now. So there's a lot of resources. This way of doing this class is new to all of us. So I hope that you'll be patient with us. We're going to be patient with you. And let's um, help each other out as we try to get towards the same goal that we all have, which is all of you being great programmers by the end of this class. Hi there. So we are in this short video. We're going to look at how to get started for IC210 with your laptop setup. So here's the course website, which you sh should be familiar with by now. I'm going to go to resources and the instructions on WSL. And the first thing we have to do is um, install WSL. So we're going to start our PowerShell here. If you just start to type it, you'll see it come up and you can click run as administrator or right click the icon and go to run as administrator and this will ask you if you really want to run as administrator and say yes. Now we just need to copy this whole command, copy paste it into the PowerShell. So you can um, right click it or probably do control C and then to paste into the PowerShell you right click once. Okay so that was very fast um, and it will ask me if I want to restart and I do so I'm going to Stop the recording. See you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. We are going to, uh, we, we've already done this first part by enabling the WSL feature in Windows and we've rebooted. So now it's time to install two applications from the Microsoft Store. So I open that by just searching for Microsoft Store here and that should come up. All right, now you're going to want to search for Ubuntu, and you'll see that there's multiple different versions. The version we want is Ubuntu 18.04. This is the same version that's installed in the labs uh, right now in the computer science department in Hopper Hall. So that's what's going to be best for us to install on your computer also. Um, you can see I already installed it, but when you come here, you're going to see a big green button down here that says get. And actually, let me uh, install something different just to show you what that looks like because... It's, I found it to be a little weird. Microsoft really wants you to sign into their thing. So uh, so you don't want to use across your devices because that would force you to sign in. So no thanks. Um, so I clicked get. And now it says that I own it. And it should start downloading. Um, and sometimes you might be helped by clicking over here. But don't um, just refuse to sign in. If they really want you to sign into the... Microsoft stuff uh, into your Microsoft account for some reason, um, so I refuse to do that. All right, but we're not actually trying to install this game. We're trying to install Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, so here we go. Yeah, here's the same thing. So if you see something like this, just close it. You don't want to actually um, sign into Microsoft. Okay, so this is going to download Ubuntu, um, and the other thing that you want to install is the Windows Terminal. Not the preview, but the real thing, and it is free as well, so we should be able to install this. Again, no, I don't want to sign in, um, and so that'll, that'll get installed, and once those get installed, you'll see something pop up down here asking, uh, okay, do you want to launch that right away. Uh, we will launch these later, but we don't need to yet. So uh, you don't need to launch either of these things that you'd installed just yet. Okay, so that's it from the Microsoft Store. The next thing is installing two packages from the web. Um, 
So this first one is going to allow us to run uh, graphical windowed programs within our Ubuntu WSL. So you just click on the link and download it here. There's a whole bunch of ads and terrible things on this page, but don't worry about that. Uh, there's a lot of free software that comes from this site, SourceForge. Uh, so we're going to save this when it pops up, and then uh, open when done is usually my go-to when I'm doing these downloads. Um, so once that's done downloading, that'll pop up. My screen is probably blank right now, and that's because Microsoft is asking if I'm sure that I want to install VCX SRV. So I'm clicking yes. Uh, that doesn't show up in the recording, but now it'll uh, bring me through the rest of the install process for VCX SRV. And I think all these defaults are fine. Yes, this is fine. And uh, that's it. And again, once this installs, you don't need to launch it yet because um, we will launch it later. So I'm going to let that keep going. And while that's going in the background, we're going to install Atom. So Atom is a text editor made by the same people who make GitHub, which we'll also be using. So you don't have to sign in or anything. Just click the download button, and that'll go through the same process similar to with VCXer. So we'll save it. I will say to open when done. Let me check on the status of this one. Yeah, so VCXSRV is installed. Great, so we can close that and the Atom installer will launch in just a moment here. And again, with Atom, as with VCX SRV, you can just accept all the defaults for the install. That'll be totally fine. So this is the Atom installer window. You might also be prompted by Windows again to, if you're sure that you want to do something with it. Um, then once this install is finished, it's going to open up the Atom text editor with a bunch of welcome pages and things like that. Uh, you can look at that if you want, but you don't need to. You can close that, and we'll um, get into Atom later when we talk about text editors. We just need to get it installed for now. So while Atom is being installed, we need to log in to two websites here. So for the first one is uh, the submit system um, for the CS department. And the easiest way to log in, you might be able to log in with username and password here, but the one that's more guaranteed to work is the second option, log in via email. So when you do that, what happens is it'll send an email to your USNA email address with a web link. Um, so I'm going to enter my USNA email address here. So it's going to send me an email with a special link that I can use to, to sign in. And the other website that we need to sign into is github.com. This is a website that many developers use to share code and to collaborate and to store their work. And we're going to use it to store your work uh, in IC210. So uh, when you come here, you won't see this because I'm already logged in. Um, but you'll just sign up for a free account using your USNA email address and then just leave this tab open logged into GitHub for the next step. OK, looks like we're ready for the last big step of the install here. So you've installed from the Microsoft Store Ubuntu, and you've also installed um, Windows Terminal. And then from the website, you've installed uh, VCX SRV and Atom. So we're ready. Uh, we also have ourselves logged into the submit system and GitHub. So let's actually launch Ubuntu now. So the first time, we're going to launch it right from the start menu directly. So find Ubuntu 18.04 that you downloaded and click on that. Um, now, the first time you run this, it has to get itself set up, actually unpack that installation. So it'll take just a few moments. So after uh, it gets itself ready, it's going to ask you for a Unix username and password. So this is for the username you want to use your M, whatever it is, uh, whatever that is for you. Uh, I'm going to use Roach. That's my USNA username. It's important that this matches with your USNA um user ID, like whatever at usna.edu. And then it's going to ask for a password. And this password does not and should not be your USNA password. It can be any short thing. It doesn't have to be very secure because it's only protecting the Ubuntu installation, which is already inside your Windows account. 
Um, so you can just choose some short password, just something that you'll remember, and you'll be asked to confirm it. Um, and when you see that installation successful, that means that you're good, you're done with this, so we can close out of this window, but we're not done um, setting up Ubuntu. What we're gonna do is actually normally run Ubuntu from the Windows terminal. So uh, in the start menu, instead of going to Ubuntu, I'm gonna go to Windows terminal, and the reason why is that this is going to be a little bit nicer than that Ubuntu terminal um, to use, easier to like cut and paste and, and for us to do our work. Uh, so by default, it starts in Windows PowerShell. But if you go to this little drop down arrow, you should now see an option for Ubuntu 1804, which you have installed. So we're going to click on that. And this opens now a terminal, an Ubuntu terminal within the Windows terminal for us. So that's great, you'll see something like this. And to get this fully set up now, we can go back to the web page and we're gonna copy and paste this command into our Ubuntu tab here. And remember that right click can be used to paste. And now this is gonna complete the rest of the setup and do a whole bunch of things. Um, it'll ask for our permission a few times, and uh, but you should be able to follow along with the instructions as they have it here. So when you're asked for your password here, like the pseudo password for Roach, this is the password that I just chose for uh, my Unix password. So it's not my USNA password or anything. It's that short, easy one that I just picked. So it's going to install uh, just a few packages right here. And then um, it'll ask us a couple times to go to uh, the websites that we saw. So it's going to ask us in a moment, it's going to ask me to go to the submit website and get my API key. So if you are logged in under your username, you'll see a link here for view reset API key. I'm not going to click on that because then you would see what my secret API key is here. But uh, you'll go there and uh, click on that and then copy and paste that back in to the running window here. And the other thing that you'll be asked to do is to go to a special URL that's going to authorize your GitHub account. So it'll be a similar thing where um, you'll see the URL that you need to go to within this terminal window. You copy and paste that into your web browser. Then you'll log into GitHub, and then that'll give you a code that you can finally copy and paste back into the terminal in order to uh, authorize that to set up your IC210 directory. And then the very last step is installing a whole bunch of software here that'll take a few minutes, so just let it run and do its thing. And uh, once that's all finished, you'll actually see the color in the terminal change slightly, and uh, you'll be set. Okay, so I can see it's asking for my submit system API key. I'm just gonna stop the recording. I think you can get it from here. Um, and you should feel good, because there's a whole bunch of setup that we've done, and just to get us comfortable in a nice environment where we can do our work of programming for IC210.